Good afternoon. I am so glad that you are joining us for this session. I hope you enjoy the music. I've tried a few different soundtracks. That one happens to be my favorite, so I hope that you're enjoying it as well. Um, my name is Audrey Harmon, and I am an Ag in the Classroom State Coordinator. We are excited that you're joining us, and we're going to introduce ourselves quickly so that we can give Kathleen all the time that she needs. I'm Melody Offiel, and Kathleen inspires me that I could draw something besides a stick figure. I don't really know, but um, she's a great teacher, so there's hope for me, maybe. Um, I will be monitoring the chat this afternoon. If you have questions about Ag in the Classroom, you can post them there. I might post some things to get you guys talking, and otherwise, we uh, will just let Kathleen do all the teaching, and we appreciate her uh, joining us. and teaching us today. Hello everyone, my name is Emily Agu. I am also an Ag in the Classroom State Coordinator. We would like to welcome everyone. Um, kind of just talking about Kathleen's session. Um, she presented for us last week as well and it was one of my favorite sessions of the week. So I'm super excited to watch today as well. Um, I am over the Q&A portion today. So if you do have a question for Kathleen while she's presenting, please use the Q&A. Um, you can use the chat to talk, but Sometimes it's hard to see all the questions that come through the chat box. So if you have a question directly for her, it's real easy for us to mark off when it gets answered so we can make sure it gets answered. Thank you so much and hope you enjoy this session. Thanks ladies. And if you have not grabbed a piece of paper, I've got mine ready to go. So make sure you get a piece of paper and something to draw with. Even if you don't have paints or crayons, uh, you can still draw the, um, the art that Kathleen's going to share with us today. So everyone, make sure you have that uh, available and um, we might have a chance to show some of your artwork if you're willing to share at the end. So Kathleen Walker is gonna turn on her camera and be joining us soon. She is the pre-K teacher for, I mean the art teacher for pre-K through fifth grade at Manford Elementary. And um, she's nationally board certified and she's fantastic. So she's not just teaching us art today, but she'll include math and a little bit of everything. It was a great presentation last week and I know you're in for a treat this week as well. So Kathleen, I'm gonna turn it over to you. You'll have to unmute yourself though. Are we there? There we go. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Hi, I'm Kathleen Walker. I teach art pre-K through fifth grade at Manford Elementary. I taught in Tulsa forever. And uh, now I'm out um, a little further out away from town. Uh, we are going to draw a truck today. Uh, I know that you've seen on dish towels and greeting cards and billboards and pillows and all kinds of home decor items, the little red truck. And it started off, you just saw it with a Christmas tree tucked in the back end. And it gives you that feeling of nostalgia and uh, that warmth and maybe some memories back into uh, our own history. And uh, now it's kind of blossoming out into other areas. Uh, part of the reason that that's so nostalgic to us is that most of us are between one to maybe four generations from having families that uh, were agricultural, that grew their own crops or grew their own um, animals or uh, were responsible for the food and fiber for themselves. And uh, maybe some of, maybe bartered some of those goods to get the other things they needed. Now only about 2% of our society grows the food and fiber for everybody else. So um, things are a little bit different now, but we still have that good feeling for uh, those old pickup trucks. If you have a penny, this is a good way to start. I'm hoping you can see, yes, you can. Okay, this is a really good way to start um, for kids because they don't like to uh, draw circles. They think circles are really hard. So I start with the, uh, with my blank paper and I turn it horizontal. Uh, kids now, we call it landscape because that relates to the computer, but it's horizontal. It's going long way side to side, horizontal or landscape. And I'm going to divide my paper in half just with my hand, just to get a visual representation of half. And then if I divide those halves into four equal places or the halves and halves, then um, 
I know that my tires for my truck are going to be divided about right here. So you can take your dime or your penny or your quarter, whatever kind of money you have, whatever you have for a circle. And we're going to go about two finger spaces from the bottom of the page. And we're just going to put our circle there. Now, when we do this, we are going to keep it light till you get it right. So right now, draw very, very lightly. I'm using a black Sharpie marker so you can see it, but usually I would draw with a pencil and draw very, very lightly because it's hard to erase and it takes extra time. And when we are finished drawing, uh, we could clean up our marks if we needed to, but we don't want those uh, stray pencil marks around. So keep it light till you get it right. We have started, I'm going to draw a little larger over here. I don't know what that is, maybe pesos, big, big coins. <laughs> and uh, around my penny marks, I'm going to use my finger and this is going to be my measuring tool to make my tires. So I'm going to put my finger here, make a little mark, put my finger here, make a little mark, same way here and here. If you wanted to, you could come out here Basically, what we're doing is getting the measurement to be able to draw our tires. Do the same thing for the back tire. Those are certainly not very round, but that's okay. My truck has been sitting out in the pasture for quite a long time, maybe with some bales of hay in it. Maybe the tires are out of round. They're going to be bumpy on the bumpy roads anyway. So the next thing we do after the tires is the, um, are the bumpers. So on the front, you could stick your finger out here and trace around it, or you can just make a letter C, just like that. That's the front of the truck bumper. The back of the truck bumper goes right in line with that. We're going to make a little rectangle right back here. And that gives you your back bumper. Uh, I forgot the hubcaps, I mean the fenders, I'm so sorry. So I hope you're keeping it light till you get it right because this walker's already messed up. I'm going to take my finger on the outside of my tire and I'm going to make a little U shape just like this and the same thing here in the front, just like this. And then I'm going to bring that around and that gives me my fender on my truck. So here's my finger, here's my U shape, here's my finger, here's my U shape. I should have used my notes. I'm sorry about that. So now our truck has fenders. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is the bottom of the truck. Comes right along here. And then we're going to echo that line. This gives us our running board for our truck. Okay, so here's our fender on our big truck. There's the fender on the big truck. We get our running board in here. We've got our bumper up at the front. We have our bumper get back at the back. So um, right here above the bumper, go about two finger spaces. And this is going to be the hood of our truck. And it just comes out and it's going to come down like a backward seven. Horizontal line comes down like a backward seven. If you wanted to add headlights here, you could. You don't have to put that on there. Uh, this one's larger. I'm going to use three fingers. So we come out like a backward seven. If you want to put some headlights on it, you can. About two more fingers up or three more fingers up, and we're going to do another backward seven. And then we're going to have a line that comes about halfway between the two fenders. And it is a vertical line, a straight up and down vertical line, just like that. So here is my straight up and down vertical line. Here is the hood of my truck. Oh, that's a mess. Okay, then inside, this big number seven right here, we're going to echo the line again, and this will give us our window. You know, it's important that we teach our kids 
we'll do a little oval for the door handle. It's important that our kids know where their food and fiber comes from and that there are careers involved in growing that food and fiber so that they appreciate that also so that they might have options for careers that they might want to go into. Um, it might be designing tractors or it might be uh, the science making seeds better. All right, now we're going to go back here, kind of even with that window line. We'll just stay in line with that, with a horizontal line and a vertical line for our tailgate. And I like to make a little extra piece back here for the tailgate to maybe be open just a little bit. And I also like to, well, I like to make a horizontal line here. That's a little bumpy. Okay. That looked like a spider. I think it was a dust bunny. I didn't clean my house up very much because I wanted you all to feel like you're a good housekeeper. So in comparison, you're excellent housekeepers. All right, there we go. So this is our truck. Now, if you are um, a fourth or fifth grade boy, this is not going to be enough for you. You're going to want to uh, add some things to it that make it more interesting, like, um, if I can get this up here close. My students like to add a, uh, some boards on the side. It helps keep your produce in, maybe some vents. Sometimes they put smokestacks or um, extra exhaust pipes, make them look four wheel drive, all those different things. You sure I'm not missing anything in here? Our uh, Ag in the Classroom lessons are all aligned with our state standards. So as you are drawing these trucks, you might be thinking about how could you use these with the um, Ag in the Classroom lessons. And there's a really neat segment on the website called Fruits, Veggies, Nuts, Oh My. And it is, um, I would call it a book. Um, I think I have it as a book, but it's on the website and it's got color photos and everything. It's really nice, but it has all kinds of science experiments and social studies activities. And then it also has arts and crafts activities and um, recipes and all kinds of things that you can use to add your truck. It has a truckload of possibilities. All right, so once we get that truck drawn, the next thing that we want to do is to paint it. And um, if you have paints at home, that's great. Um, I like these, um, they're called Lyra, L-Y-R-A, Lyra paints, and they are opaque temperate paints. See if I can do this without spilling them. This is what I use in my classroom. It has two levels of brightly colored paints. It comes with a brush and it has a little tube of white paint that I remove before I let my kids play with them because they would squeeze out the paint. And then it has this nice little area where you can mix and you can uh, scrape off your brush. It, it has a nice little area for that. I usually have two students share one of these and we arrange it on the table something like this so that they can both reach all the different parts of the paint. To activate these paints, you have to get them wet. And so you could take your paintbrush and dip it into your water and then use it like a bucket. You fill your paintbrush up with water and you can use it like a bucket to wet your paints. But um, I t it's a lot faster and easier if you use one of these spray bottles. And I just tell my kids that if they're really good and doing what they're supposed to, I will save them time and trouble and wet their paints. Really, it saves me time and trouble because otherwise they make a drippy mess all over the table. So I put this on the fine mist and I go around and I just spritz everybody's um, paint for them like that. It gets the paint wet and activated. Uh, one of the things I always tell my kids is that we never tap our paintbrush when we're getting ready to use the paint. You stick it into the jar of water and I give them a ramekin 
like ketchup comes in at McDonald's, it's a little plastic ramekin. You could even use the paper ones because they're going to throw them away at the end of class. And we fill it half full. They can uh, refill it if it gets dirty, but it's only half full. It's only one finger deep. That way when they spill it, because you know they're going to, when they spill it, it's just a little bitty mess. You can clean it up with one paper towel. But we never tap our brush like this. They want to tap the water off. We never tap it because that splatters water all over us and our friends and our artwork and nobody likes that. So you rinse your brush and then you scrape it off like you're petting a tiny little puppy. Scrape as much off if you want to. If you really need your brush dry, use your paper towel. So we are going to pet our paints like we're petting a tiny little puppy. And with these paints, you want the paint kind of muddy, like um, not quite as thick as a milkshake, but you want to blend that water into the paint enough that uh, you get a nice, bold, bright color. I just forgot a really important detail. Sorry about that. So once you get to this point, you decide which lines you want, you erase whatever you don't want to keep, and then you're going to go over that artwork. You're going to go over your lines with a heavy black crayon. Now I have my kids do this for a couple of reasons. It reminds them how to draw the truck, so it gives them practice in drawing the truck. It reminds them to stay focused when they're writing because they have to press down. And for my little ones, it builds up those muscles. We're not getting nearly enough uh, fine motor skill muscles developed now that we play with computers all the time. And so our kids need those, that skill. So we go over the lines we want to keep. Now the crayon also acts as a fence to keep your paint in the right spot. So I have stirred my paint in by using little petting motions like I'm petting a teeny tiny puppy. And now I am going to go in and paint in those lines. Oh, I already got out of the lines. So you can paint in your whole truck. Now, if you don't have paint at home, and since some of us are going to be starting virtually, it looks like, if your kids don't have paint at home, they can also use food coloring. And when I use food coloring, I use an ice tray because it corrals the food coloring. Need a little more water here. I use an ice tray and I drip the paint into the ice tray. Here's my ice tray right here. This one happens to be really small. And I'm going to drip my food coloring into the ice tray. But I've got to tell you, food coloring stains. This paint, it will not stain because it's made for school age kids. They could eat it. They lick it sometimes, so I try not to get them to eat it. Um, and it won't make them sick. When I spray it with water, the water I use has a couple of drops of food grade essential oils. And I do that because it keeps the paint from molding when it gets put up wet, keeps it a little bit fresher. And I just shake my bottle up. I'll use, I don't know, maybe two drops for a bottle like this. And then I just keep filling this up with water and I rarely ever put more drops in it. It just, I don't know, it stays in the plastic or something, but that'll keep your paints fresh. When you're using the food coloring, before you put that food coloring in your ice tray, put a drop or two of dish soap in there because that stuff stains like crazy. And I'm just going to put a drop in here. I had this all over me the other day. Okay. And then if you don't have a paintbrush, even if you do have a paintbrush, these things are the handiest things on earth. They're cotton swabs. Some people call them Q-tips. And I just mix my paint up on here. Oh, I think I may not have gotten red. And if you want to, you can add, if it's too thick, you can add a little bit of water to that. Oh, not sure what color this is. I thought it was red when I picked it up. So you can paint with this. But 
but look at the control it gives you. Oh, we have a purple truck now. That's fun. And it gives the kids more control. It also takes more time if you want them to take more time. And sometimes we do uh, so we can get, you know, caught up on another part of the lesson or help other kids. But that if you don't have paint at home, the food coloring works pretty well. I have also used when I needed red paint, I've also used Jello and it worked just fine. Just bear, uh, mix the powder in with just a little bit of water. Kool-Aid works. I've mixed Kool-Aid with glue before and it made great paint. It was even shiny. And then use your Q-tips if you don't have paint brushes. Do we have any questions yet? I am not seeing any questions come in. You might, I know last week everyone wanted you to repeat the name of the paints. Oh, okay. And I'll also someone did ask, can you repeat that book? So the book that she mentioned earlier is our Fruits, Nuts, and Veggies, Oh My. It's on our website. We have a few copies left and um, you can request them from our website if you go to the resources uh, to request, excuse me, request resources um to request coloring books and things like that that's also on there so you can request them we will send them out until we no longer have any but at that time it will um, remain on the website so you'll be able to get it there and kathleen people are saying that they love directed drawings and so they appreciate you doing this and just as a reminder um, her session is filmed and so you can share it with your students and uh, use her, her teaching or you can make it your own and um, just take the information from her and, and do the instructions yourself. They'll love it. Okay, so um, as we are developing our truckload of possibilities, we, um, one of the crops that you might want to add in there would be a Christmas tree. And so to paint the Christmas tree, I do usually try to paint it, not draw it in, but you could draw it first if you wanted to. But to paint the Christmas tree, I'm going to use a little bit of brown and I want my brush almost dry. So I'm holding up my Lyra opaque tempera paint and I uh, pet the paint and then I'm just going to scrape off most of the paint so that there's only paint on the tippy toe of my brush. And if you turn your brush as you're scraping, it will make a really nice point. Then I'm going to draw a line. It can be a straight line or a curved line, but I'm drawing a line from the back of the tailgate all the way up uh, uh, above the cab of the truck. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight because trees are never perfectly straight. And then I'm rinsing out my paintbrush Scrape it on the bottom just a little bit and then scrape the excess water off. And now I'm going into, I'll start with light green. And again, I'm getting just a tiny bit of paint on my brush. I, I want my brush almost dry and I'm going to make diagonal lines. If you use the tip of your brush, this is a really good place to get good at painting because you can use the tip of your brush and practice making skinny strokes. And there's the tree that's sticking up and then you can also have the branches that are sticking down. And you can have them showing outside your truck or you can do the overlap and let them be inside the truck. Now I'm going to a dark green because a single colored tree would be boring. I'm going to add some dark branches as well. And if you're a second grader, then you would definitely want to go ahead and put the star on the top of the tree because my second graders always do. My older kids make fun of that because they know that the star is the last thing you put on the tree after you get all the decorations on it. But you can go ahead and put a star up here if you like. I paint my tires gray or black, but my kids sometimes like to make them different colors. And the first time we do a truck, I make everybody do a red truck so they all look the same. 
And then when we do our springtime trek, you can make um, you can make them the colors of your choice. Some of my trucks were purple and rain, rainbow and all different colors. So that would be our wintertime trek. For fall, uh, we would do a pumpkin, of course. And uh, to draw a pumpkin, let's see if I have another blank trek here. To draw a pumpkin, I start with my thumb and I put it right in the middle of the bed of the truck. If I'm going to do a big pumpkin, I might go all the way up to the top of my thumb. I'm going to draw an oval over that or half of an oval. Something like that. So it looks like a big old thumb in the back of your truck. Then I'm going to go with half of a letter C. And I'm not starting at the very top of this oval and I'm not starting on the side but kind of in between. And this letter C goes up and down and the rest of it's hidden behind the truck. Do the same thing over here with a backwards letter C. And there you have a pumpkin. Now, I don't know about you, but my mom taught me anything worth doing is worth overdoing. That pumpkin's not big enough. We're gonna go again with the letter C. Right here, fill up the bed of that truck. It looks like the ones up in Nova Scotia that they cut the tops off of and hollow them out and they get inside them and they have the race where they go across the bay. You should Google it on YouTube, it's pretty good. Then uh, you can go in for your stem on your pumpkin and this is a good time to switch to crayon unless your kids are iffy, you could do this in pencil first. But I start off with a triangle, something like that. And from your triangle, you're going to make some curvy lines. And here is the stem of your pumpkin. They can overlap as well. You can put some leaves on there if you want to. Those are not very good pumpkin leaves, but we'll leave it at that. When you're coloring your pumpkin, you can do this with paint or oil pastel. You can even do this with crayons, but I don't have any crayons at home. So I start with my outline with a red. And so where I did my thumb shape right there, I do that with a red. There's my letter C's coming out to the side. And then I go into the parts of the pumpkin. Those are the parts of the pumpkin that are going to stick in. They're the dense the dent into the pumpkin. I'm going to come out here where the pumpkin sticks out and color yellow. And I tell my kids if they're using crayons, don't do this very hard. If you're doing the oil pastels, you can press down pretty hard. And then you go in and color with your orange. And as you're coloring with your orange, it's going to pick up the red and the yellow and your pumpkin is going to be completely shaded by the time you finish with your orange. And you can do it, use the side of your oil pastel. I think you get the idea. And then if it's not um, blended as much as you want, this is another time that you can use your Q-tip and go in here and you make tiny little circles and blend your oil pastels together. And then if you're doing this with crayon, with oil pastels, it's not necessary, but if you're doing this with crayon, after you get everything all blended together, you can go back over the whole thing with a yellow crayon, the whole thing with the yellow crayon, and it comes out looking and feeling just like a pumpkin. My kids love that. So for fall, we have pumpkins to go in our pickup trucks. That fruits, nuts, veggies. Oh, my book has a wonderful recipe for silly pumpkin putty. And it smells so
so wonderful. Like pumpkin pie, and if you make it in the morning, your room will smell like pumpkin pie all day. And if you make it, if you teach art or you teach several classes and they make it, my class smelled like pumpkin spice for the whole rest of the season. It was delightful. So keep that in mind. Here's the pumpkin that's completely finished. And then um, for summertime, you could do the watermelon. Ag in the Classroom has a wonderful monthly calendar that tells you the fruit of the month and the vegetable of the month. I can't remember what else, but there's always an artist print. And the one for August, maybe it was July, the one for August had Frida Kahlo's watermelon. And I've seen lots of Frida Kahlo art, but her watermelons I had never seen before. They're spectacular and uh, inspiring. So check that out. So to do a watermelon, we're just going to start with an oval. Something like that. Remember, you're sketching it with a pencil. You're going to keep it light till you get it right. And then we're going to make lines that echo these curves, but we're making them super, super light. So I'm going to echo this line, just like this. Echo this line, just like this. Echo this line, just like this. And then when we go into paint, and you could do this with crayons or markers, it, it doesn't matter. My paints have dried out. Go. So when we go into paint, you can go in and paint your light green all over. That's a little scribble scrabbly, but it'll do. And then you can go in with the dark green and if you wait till this is dry to paint on it or to add crayon over it, um, you'll get a little better result. Let's we'll see what I can do here. Getting my paint really thick and just on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to go along those lines and make a zigzagging line. And that gives us the lines on our watermelon. You could also have your watermelon sliced open if you wanted to, but that would look kind of funny if you saw it driving down the truck, driving down the highway. So here we have our watermelon. In uh, for the springtime in March, the vegetable, the fruit of the month is grapes. And if you use the fruits, veggies, nuts, oh my book, there is a wonderful experience in making grapes. You take the lid of a marker or any small circle that you have and you dip it into paint and then you stamp it on your paper to make your group of grapes. And then you make uh, the leaf for the grapes and then cut them out. You could even use the child's handprint to make the leaf if you wanted it to be super personal. And that would look cute in the back of your truck. Um, let's see. We had in August, it's corn, uh, yeah, corn harvesting begins and the yellow paper that I had had polka dots on it, but in the fruits, nuts, veggies. Oh my book, there is an art activity where you use bubble wrap and you paint yellow on your bubble wrap and you press that on your paper and then you cut that out to be your ear of corn. And then you can cut out the child pan, let them trace around their hand, color it green, and then um, you can cut out their handprint to be the husk. How cute is that in your pickup truck? You could also do cutouts of the specialty crops from Oklahoma like watermelons and pumpkins 
and you can add those to your track, make the cute bulletin board. How am I doing on time? Okay, we have two more activities. <clears throat> In the fruits, nuts, veggies, oh my book, there is an abstract specialty crop art. So we drew the pumpkin just like we did with the red crayon. And then we filled it in with different line designs. If you want to look at YouTube to get some ideas for that, they call them Zen tangles or line designs. But those are, that's another one of the activities from that same book. Okay, so for our next activity, we're going to make a track. Looks just like this. It has rolly wheels. There we go. And I start with a piece of red construction paper and I use the paper cutter and cut it into strips. And uh, I think I got five strips. I, I may have only gotten four strips, about that tall. And then each student is going to need uh, two of these strips. So on one strip, this is going to be the bed of your track. And then the next strip, they cut into thirds. And you can cut them, they don't have to be equal. So you could cut it in half to get the cab of your truck. And then these are going to be our fenders. But, so here's the cab of the truck. You got that? So we had two red strips of paper. One of them we leave whole for the bed of the truck. The other one we cut into thirds. So here's the cab of the truck. And we're just going to round off the corners just a little bit, not very much. Put some stick glue on it. There we go. There's the cab, oh, there's the cab of our truck glued on. Then uh, you can take a smaller piece of yellow and do the same thing. You're just going to cut off the edges to make them a little bit rounder. Cut off the corners, don't cut off the edges. The corners make a little bit rounder. Smack some glue on that. Here is the window of the truck. There we go. Then um, the next thing is you take these other two red rectangles and you're going to cut off just the top corners of them. Only the top corners. Mine don't match at all. I'm going to make them match just a little bit. And I'm taking off this top corner. Turn around so you can see the red. And this top corner. And now these are going to be the fenders. And I'm putting glue only on the top part right back here of the fender. Okay, so here's the, here's the truck. One fender, the other fender. Those might be a little bit big for this track. If you think they're too big, you can cut the bottoms off. My kids always take the squares and cut them so it makes them really small. So there we go. Now, for the tires, they need two white squares of paper. And these are maybe an two inches by two inches. And I have them put their thumb in the middle of that square put their thumb in the middle of the square, and then I'm going to cut around my thumb. I'll show you what it looks like. Don't get close to your thumb. So I cut around my thumb just like that. You see that? I did two of them at once. I tell my kids to only do one. Then I'm going to take that and put my thumb on it again. Cut around that. So you should end up with something that looks sort of like a circle. That's going to be your hubcap. And then they'll need two black squares a little bit bigger than that. And again, cut one of these at a time because they're going to mess up. And I cut off the corners here, all four corners, gently cut off small corners. And then from those four corners, you're, you've made eight corners. So now you're going to gently cut off the littlest bit of those corners. And if you keep cutting off corners, you should end up with 
two tires. So now I'm going to take my hubcaps and I'm going to use a pencil, no, use a pen for this if you can, but a pencil will work too. And I'm going to make a dot in the middle of this hubcap and I go over it about five or six times. And um, when you draw over it with a pen several times, it's going to end up making a hole in the middle of your hubcap. So there's a hole in the middle of that and a hole in the middle of that. I take my, um, the, these are brads and kids love these. I pass these out myself. I do not let a student pass these out. I always pass them out myself and I hand two of these to every student and tell them as I hand it to them, don't lose this. You're going to need this, don't lose this. Because they'll say, I only got one. So-and-so didn't give me mine. Anyway, so uh, these brads, and they're just amazing. They're old fashioned, but they make things move and kids love that. So I take this brad, I'm going to carefully stick it through that hole, stick it through this hole. Helps if you stick your tongue out. Now my wheel will roll. And then I'm going to make a mark in the middle of my hub, my fender, not a hubcap, fender. Stick that brad through there. It was still wet from the glue. There we go. Stick that through there. And I always remind my kids to be safe, but keep band-aids on hand too. So here we go. And here's my tire rolling around. These things have one long leg and one short leg. Makes them easy to, I don't know if you can see that. Makes them easier to spread apart. Put this other one on here. something like that. Did you get the idea? And then from here, you can use those fruits and veggies and nuts that you've created from your specialty crop. And each kid can change out their fruits on the uh, bulletin board or to take home and stick on their refrigerator, whatever you like. Do I have time for a poem? I'm going to read you a poem really quickly. You've got plenty of time. Thank you. Okay. This is a poem. It's by Jack Perletsky. Perletsky. And if you've never met him, he is a hilarious man. And his poetry is, um, it's joyful. I don't know how else to say it, but his, his poetry is really joyful, makes kids feel good. He has a poem that's called Oysters that's really good. But this one is in the Fruits, Nuts, Veggies, Oh My book. And it's called uh, Last Night I Dreamed of Chickens by Jack Perletsky. Last night I dreamed of chickens. There were chickens everywhere. They were standing on my stomach. They were nesting in my hair. They were pecking at my pillow and they were hopping on my head. They were ruffling up their feathers as they raced around my bed. They were on the chairs and tables and they were on the chandeliers and they were roosting in the corners and they were clucking in my ears. There were chickens, chickens, chickens as far as I could see. And when I woke up this morning, there were eggs on top of me. And I just, I don't know if that poem just speaks to me because my chickens just laid eggs. I, my, my eggs just hatched. My chickens just hatched. And I think I have chickens on the brain right now. But I just thought that was a really cute poem and the kids would love it. And you could even put chickens in your pickup truck. Take them to town. If they have a good time, you could take them to the zoo the next day. You could put a cow in your pickup truck. She would enjoy that as well. So I hope that you will use the resources from Ag in the Classroom. If you have any questions that I can answer, my email is up here. It's walkerk at manford.k12.ok.us. And you can contact me anytime and uh, just have a fun time teaching with Ag in the Classroom. 
Thank you, Kathleen. And if you drew a truck and would like to share it. So last week I did a Christmas tree. This week I decided to try oh, the pumpkin. I love your fat pumpkin. Yeah, like thanks. The sign on the back. <laughs> so if you drew one and you want to share it, if you want to use your hand raise function, um, I see one hand is up. Karina, if you have a question, I'm going to lower your hand. If you have a question, let us know. But um, if you'll use your hand raise function, I can let you uh, become a panelist just long enough to share your artwork with us. If you are a brave soul and want to do that, we would love to see your um, artwork. While people are deciding if they want to share or not, someone is asking when will this video be available to view. So we will send out links next week. Uh, we will have, the sessions are recorded, so we'll have, uh, links will have that. They will have the um, PowerPoint lessons, if anyone's used, for those who have used PowerPoints, um, any papers that go along with it, things like that, and then your professional development points. So all of that will be sent to you next week. Any final questions for Kathleen? Anyone want to share their artwork? I'm, I'm checking out before we close out of the session. I drew one. Melody. Can you see it? I see your Christmas tree. There you go. My focus won't let me read what it says on your track. Oh, Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom. Of course. Of course. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. One, um, well, that's all. No, you've got time. Do you want to share oh, one more thought? Well, one more thing. Uh, the reason I love those paints so much is that after they dry, they come with a white paint that you can add highlights with. That after they dry, you can also use chalk and come in here and put your, whoops, put your shading and your highlights in. So it makes it look like your truck is shiny and that's kind of fun. My fifth grade boys really loved this and we, we really got into that because they made some of their trucks silver and blue and turquoise and so that it's kind of fun to add some chalk to it. That's fantastic. Thanks for that pointer. And I know that earlier in one of our sessions, um, I think it was Jackie that mentioned the Ag in the Classroom art contest. So keep your eyes out for that. And whenever you use um, special paints or markers or crayons, um, oftentimes your artwork will stand out. So keep that in mind as your students are, are entering the art contest. And that's for everyone. Hopefully we'll have lots of art come in. And I, I'm guessing we might have some uh, farm trucks added since the teachers now know how to draw that. So I Kathleen, thank you so much. Uh, we sure do appreciate you. You did a great job and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. I love what you all do and all the opportunities that you give us. And Ag in the Classroom treats teachers so well and just provides so much for us. So thank you very much. You're welcome. We try to do that. And just so everyone, one final plug for uh, Jocelyn Peckett's session on Thursday at nine o'clock. If you are using Google Classroom in your school and you're nervous about that, it does not matter what grade level you teach. Jocelyn shared some fantastic tips last week and she will again on Thursday. And I sent that link out to everyone. So please consider joining that. And also if you didn't sign up for Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon and you're interested, the afternoon's a high school focus. So um, you might not be interested in that, but if you are and you don't have those links, then just email me and I will be glad to send them to you. So Melody and Emily and I are thankful that you joined us today and we're going to go ahead and close out this session and we will see you on Thursday. All right. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks Kathleen. Bye-bye.